We're going to recrown a barrel today uh, using some simple hand tools that you can get from Brownells Gunsmith Supply. So what we have is we have a Dutch Beaumont, the bolts out and disassemble, carbine, which Dutch Beaumonts do not come in carbines. Okay, they never did. They used the little Remington uh, rolling block for their cavalry troops or soldiers, I believe. But anyway, there is no such thing. So this gun was cut down at one time. Uh, whoever did it did a halfway decent job, but the end of the muzzle is pretty screwed up looking. It's see, you can see where it's been sawed and all this, and it's not straight. So when it comes to recrowning a muzzle or working on it, if there's damage or if the gun is sawed off, I have this one. I have the Russian Baradine in that. You got several choices. Uh, Iraqi Vet 88888 did one once where he's got that shop he works in. They have that set. Now there's an expensive set you can get that'll recrown anything quick, easy, fast. But you know it's it's extremely expensive and covers a wide range of uh, barrels and guns. Which for a gunsmith, you know, yeah, laying down about eight hundred thousand dollars is cool, but you know, I got one or two guns to do. So the solution is you can get a simple set of hand tools from Brownells and recrown the muzzle. Uh, and we'll take a look at the table and I'll show you everything I'm gonna need to do this job out here in the garage fairly quick and easy. I have done it before on a Chaspo. Uh, rifle that somebody had uh, muscle up the bayonet on there forever and uh, the very end of the muzzle was damaged you know so I had to take almost almost quite an eighth inch off the end of the thing to get that wobble out and then recrown it and it shoots great so we're going to try it with this one here so I'll show you how it's going to go now there are a couple different ways to uh, Recrown a muzzle in different styles and a lot of the old military guns had the big radius and that crown is set back inside um, This particular method probably will not work But it is going to work with a sawed-off barrel because it's flat. Okay, there's no radiuses or uh, the crown isn't recessed back down in so This may not work for every gun so what it is, it's just a couple cutters, and they come in different sizes, okay? And I got three quarter inch, because I doubt any of the guns I'd be working on uh, would be over a three quarter inch diameter barrel, okay? You can get larger ones, because a lot of target barrels uh, will go an inch or so on a bull barrel on a gun. And what, I, what you have to get is two tools. You don't have to, but I did. This is a three quarter. 90 degree cutting tool, okay? There's a hole here for a pilot and this threaded ends for the handle. So this is what I'm gonna to use to cut the barrel flat and straight uh, to the bore. So that's a three quarter inch, 90 degree muzzle facing cutter. That's what this is. Then I got an 11 degree by three quarter inch crown tool. And what this is, is if you notice, it's tapered. This is what's going to carve the angle, 11 degree angle, for the crown, okay? You're going to need the handle, which goes on the back. And you're going to need a pilot, which goes up into the front. Uh, I'm going to use some Dicom Blue layout fluid. And you're going to need cutting fluid of some sort. Okay, so before we get started, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you what we're going to use the layout fluid for. I'm going to put layout fluid on the muzzle so when I'm cutting, I'll be able to tell where I am. So we take the rifle. And we put a little bit of the layout fluid on there. Uh, 
like that. And what this will do is when we cut, once all the blue is gone, I know I'm where I should be. That's right, so we're going to set that over there and let it dry. Now, like I said, we had the two colors. Put the crown one away. So we take our cut. Take our little handle, which is, you know, it's a kit, you gotta buy it all. And like I said, he's got a couple different sizes. I believe there's one inch or over an inch. And then you just turn this down on there. And then when you turn this by hand, it will turn clockwise, will be the direction of the teeth they're cutting. Now, pilots. You got a couple choices of the pilots. The pilots go in this little hole in the front, and there's a flat on the shaft. I don't know if you can see it. There's a flat there, and that set screw that's in the body of this is going to catch on that. When you turn that screw down, it will hit that flat. Uh. Make sure you got it lined up to the flat. Yep. And tighten it down. Just enough to hold it. Okay. And there's your device. Pilot, handle, cart. Now, the pilots come either in steel of a certain size or you can get them in brass. And what I did is got a brass one that's oversized and then put it on a lathe and turned it. Um, now I did the one gun, this one was close to the same thing, all I had to do was polish it with emery cloth, now it fits in there, and I can use this. Uh, and then once I'm done recrowning this, if I go to a smaller diameter bore, I'll just turn this and use it on a smaller diameter bore. That's the nice thing about the brass ones. Or if you're doing standard calibers, you can get the correct pilot that'll fit like 30 caliber, 40 caliber, 38 caliber, and just, you know, have the different size pilots. I got a brass one because these are all odd sizes. They do not have pilots in the correct diameter for guns like this. You got to kind of tweak it in yourself. All right, and once we get set up, we'll get back here. I've set the rifle up with a series of clamps, just more or less standing it up. You can do this in a vise or however, uh, but I think it's best to stand it up that way. Um, everything is pointed downward, chips and all the other stuff. You may, if laying it on its side, you may not get it quite straight. So there's the bluing. So once all that's gone, we'll know that we have a uh, straight edge. Okay. And that's basically my setup here. And we'll start truing up the end of the barrel here. Alright, we have our flat facing tool set up. That should just kind of go down in there snugly. There it goes. A little bit of cutting fluid on there. And we just, with a little bit of pressure, turn it. Take your time, go slow, and check it. Okay, and I'll show you why we use the blue. Alright, you see with our first little bit of turning, you see where it hits the high spot. Okay, so that muzzle ain't flat at all, it's way off. So it's going to take a little work to get that trued up. But that's the whole idea of the bluing. Alright, so take your time, put, you know, pressure by hand, hopefully you don't get too much chatter, but 
A little bit of cheddar ain't gonna kill you. Yeah, it's gonna. It's got about half of it. And then, you know, while you're doing it, you can, I'll go get a brush and clean it up. But that's got about half of the barrel. So it's just a slow process going by hand. And when you get a chip build up in the flutes, uh, just, you know, if you got shop air, blow it off, brush it off, clean it up a little, and just keep going like that slowly uh, by hand until you get uh, desired results. I'll let you take a look at what we got. Okay, that's where we are at this point. And there is some chatter in there, the lines, uh, but that's because the cutter's only cut now. You know, it's not making a full cut smoothly. So I'm gonna go until <clears throat> I get all the bluing knocked off and then we'll kind of try to finish it off nice there. Well, there's our progress. As you see why I used the bluing. Um, got it about three quarters. We still have to get it. I'm going to wait until it's nice and smooth all the way across. And there's no blue left. So, and this one's, it was really cut off. Well, you could see it. But it's going to take a bit of work to get it squared up here. Okay, so, like I said, you'd want to get it to where the gun is mounted standing up fairly straight. And the trick is just put gentle, even pressure on this, down on it. And slowly turn. Just take your time. And, uh... And remove the chips as they build up. Keep going until you're just about flat. All right, I'll get back when I'm done. All right, so there we have it. After taking our time and just spending a little time. We got it to where that barrel's flat, flush now. All the blue's gone just about. Other than just on the edge, I ain't going to worry about that. And then what you would do, there's still some chatter in there. It's not horrible, but, you know, doing something by hand uh, is going to leave some tool marks. And what you would do is just lighten the pressure and take a few turns real gentle. And actually, I know this camera does not wish to focus. Uh, it looks bad, but running your fingernail on there, it's fairly smooth, even though you got some of that, those little tool marks on there. But we got to run, now we're going to run the uh, actual crowing tool. All right, we're finished with the 90 degree, basically like a facing tool. So we take our handle off. And I kind of like leaving the uh, little space there uh, with the uh, pilot in case there's a burr. There's room that the pilot will just push the burr up without it getting stuck. Or you would have to loosen that pilot from the outside and let it drop down the barrel. Okay, so 90 degree tool is finished. Put that one to sleep. And we get the 11 degree um, crown, which this is actually how we're going to put the crown on. And you just spin your little handle on there. Okay, remember the flat spot on there, line up with our uh, set screw. Ok, 
Okay, our tool's ready. Put the crown on. Okay, a little bit of cotton fluid on the surface. Now this one, we're going to go real slow with it. This is the one that's going to cut the uh, Eleven degree angle on there. Just take your time and go slow. Kind of nice even pressure. That just started the chamfer. Starting. Basically, you can see an outline of where this is cutting. And I'm only going to go so far and make a sharp edge. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy with this and go all the way down and that. And it, it, this here, you just kind of go slow and take your time. And, and I got chips in there. All right, I'm going to clean everything out. And I'll get back to these. Okay, I've re-blued the muzzle. And I'm going to show you, I'm just going to touch this up. Now this cuts a lot smoother and finer than that rough facing. And just with nice even pressure, we cut a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to show you what I got, and I'm probably going to leave it alone. Uh, but we'll take a close look at what I've done here. Okay, as you can see, I reapplied the blue so you can see it better. Uh, this cuts down at an angle, so that is recessed down in there. Now, we got the muzzle straight, and all you have to really do to recrown is get a nice sharp edge. Okay, and this cutter recesses this in there. So I'm hitting the lands and the grooves so the end of that barrel has a nice straight sharp edge and I'm going to leave it alone just as that. And you know you can see that that other cutter doesn't really leave the chatter. Some of that there's loose chips. Um, but that cut a lot smoother, nicer, just a little bit. And you know, once you get the barrel flat, don't take much. You know, like they like to dish that all the way out to the uh, outside of the barrel. I, I don't need that. We've accomplished what we needed. We straightened the barrel. So we straightened the face of the barrel. And then we went and did a little recess and cut a chamfer in there. And so now we got a nice straight sharp edge on our rifling. The gun sh should shoot fine now. So that's one way of doing it by hand, simple method. Um, you know, you can buy the tools from Brunel's and up to a three quarter inch diameter barrel. Uh, you can do this. It's not that difficult. You know, it isn't exactly inexpensive, but it beats the $800 kit. Okay, and I don't, other than this is the second time I've used it since I bought the setup. You do have to buy 
uh, two or three different things. You can get a different uh, angle for the uh, crown. You can get a different degree, uh, but you should at least get the 90 degree to straighten the barrel up. And then, like I said, you can buy appropriate bushings for whatever. Uh, so, there you go.